Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. And for those of you who are new here, I'm Amy. I'm a full-time reseller, primarily on the Poshmark app, but I do dabble in other online platforms and I sell locally. Today, I'll be doing a ship with me video. I do these every week. Uh, and in these videos, I go day to day and I share the different items that I'm shipping out. I talk about how much I paid for them, what they sold for and what my profit was. So you wanna be sure to watch all the way to the end because I always have interesting and unique items. Uh, so hopefully Hopefully you can learn some different things that you can keep your eyes out for when you're out thrifting to resell for a profit. Also, sometimes it might look like the video is over, but keep watching because there's usually at least three clips per video uh, because like I said, I go day to day. So let's get started. Uh, these sales are from over the weekend and to be honest, it was kind of a slow weekend. I've kind of had slow sales lately on Poshmark. I'm trying not to let it get me down. I'm just trying to keep listing and I'm also listing on Cherish uh, in hopes that that will kind of take up some of the lag from Poshmark. So the first item that sold is this really pretty heart-shaped ring. Now this is just costume jewelry, but it is a pretty high quality costume jewelry. It's from the Danbury Mint and they do uh, pieces that are inspired by uh, famous people's jewelry. Like I, I'm not sure who this was inspired by, but you know, like they might make a uh, ring inspired by JLo's pink diamond or something like that. These are more historical probably, but anyways, they make qu uh, quality costume and genuine uh, jewelry items. So this ended up selling for $25. I had had it listed for quite some time, over a year, so I'm happy to see it go. I only had paid $3 for this, so it was okay that it took a little while to sell. I'm just noticing the detail actually on this. I didn't realize that it had stones on the sides too. It's really a pretty piece. So like I said, it sold for $25 and I paid three. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $17. Not a bad little profit on a $3 investment. And like I say over and over again, jewelry does not take up much space at all. And I try and keep my cost of goods low so that even if it takes a bit of time to sell, it's no big deal. I don't have a bunch of money, you know, out sitting in limbo and it's not taking up a whole bunch of space. So that's one of the reasons I like to keep my eyes out for uh, jewelry when I'm out thrifting or estate sailing. Uh, it's just been really a great little bread and butter item for me to have. I'm gonna have to redo that, sorry, I didn't do it tight enough. Uh, in my closet, just so I can list more without having you know a bunch of space taken up. So for those of you who are new here, I typically get my little boxes at the dollar store. These are actually in the uh, food storage area and they come 10 to a package and they're only like $1.39 for the 10. And then I get my ribbon at um, thrift stores and estate sales. I try and you know pay under a quarter for it. I figure I don't wanna be buying new ribbon when I know the people are just going to throw it away and I can get it cheaper secondhand. Okay, the next item that sold is another jewelry piece and this is a really cute uh, little brooch that is shaped like sunglasses and funny enough I got these at the same estate sale. I got a huge haul of jewelry at this estate sale and I spent over $600. This has been like I said over a year ago. Um, but I got some really spectacular genuine jewelry and then a lot of fun vintage costume jewelry. This ended up selling for $18, which I think is a pretty great price for a little teeny brooch like that. Uh, there was actually two that of these brooches that were exactly the same and I already sold the other one and it sold for $17. I only paid a dollar for this. So um, after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $11.38. Not a huge profit, but a great return on a dollar investment. And um, just a fun little piece. I hope the, the buyer enjoys it. And I've also said this before, but for those of you who are new here, 
I do pick up brooches, but I do not like to pay up for them. I like to pay less than say $2 because they do typically uh, take some time to sell. The next piece I thought was really cool. It is this belt that has a very distressed look. It's an intentional look. And then it has this art on it. And you can see here at the end that it's like a woman's face. It's just a really cool piece. And I actually found this at the bins. If you've been watching my videos, you know I love selling belts. If you're new to my channel, if you keep watching, you'll see I sell belts all the time. And I do really pretty well, amazingly well, actually, selling belts. Uh, they're definitely a bread and butter item for me. This sold for $30. I had paid less than a dollar for it because I got it at the bins and my bins only charges, I think it's $1.35 per pound. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $23. I think that's really great. That's kind of, you know, what I aim for between a $15 and $30 profit on my belts. Uh, I use these little thank you stickers. I get them from Amazon, but actually I just ordered some off of Temu, or Temu, T-E-M-U. It's kind of a... Um, it's my first time ordering from there, so we'll see how this stuff is. Uh, but it's a cheap website. They have everything that you can think of on there. And the stickers were only um, like $1.89 for 500. So they might be really tiny when I get them, but I just thought I'd try it. I ordered some others uh, too off of there that are a little bit bigger looking. So I'll report back and let you know because that's a lot more affordable than they were on Amazon. I think they were $10 for like 250 or something. I ordered, I also ordered a couple other little trinkets, affordably priced things just to kind of see what the quality is like. I don't usually order off those type of sites, but I was <laughs> in a mood this morning. So anyways, that is all for today. I do have a question for uh, those of my existing followers and new followers. Um, do you guys think that I need that long intro on the videos? I mean, I guess it's not that long, but when I'm watching other YouTubers, they don't necessarily go into like a whole description of who they are or anything. Should I just say, hi, I'm Amy. When you first found my channel, did that, hearing that information about me, did that encourage you to keep watching or do you not care either way? Just wondering if I need to keep doing that or not. Uh, I really appreciate your feedback. Also, if you're enjoying my videos, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to my channel. It's totally free and it really helps me out uh, when you hit that subscribe button. And if you ring the bell, it'll notify you when I upload new videos. Also, if you could give this video a thumbs up, that really helps me out too. Okay, I will be back in a couple of days. Hopefully I'll have some more exciting sales to share with you and I will see you then. Hi again, it's a few days later and I've got some more stuff to ship out. It has been pretty slow, uh, but I do have some sales, so I'm gonna be thankful for that. Uh, the first item that sold is this Pendleton Wool uh, iPad cover. And this sold pretty quickly. Uh, I think I could have gotten a little bit more for it, but I hadn't had any sales in 48 hours and I got this offer for $40 on it. So I decided to accept it in hopes that it would boost my algorithm placement to get me more sales and it did. So sometimes when you don't have any sales, uh, if you get a reasonable offer, just go ahead and accept it to get your sales going again. Also, this piece did have some flaws to the wool and it was missing uh, the long strap that went with it. I don't think $40 is terrible for um, the condition that it was in and I only paid $5 for it. So that still left me a profit of $27 after my cost of goods and Poshmark fees. And I it only took maybe two weeks to sell. So that is great. I don't have to share it and send offers and do all the stuff for a long time. So I am 
happy to turn and burn it and make that nice little profit. Let's see, I did forget to get a box for that, but oh well. <laughs> the next item that sold is this pair of Nike running shoes. And, you know, I'm kind of on the fence about Nike's because my Goodwill typically marks them up. But if I go in and I find some that are in nice condition, like you can tell these were only worn a couple of times, sometimes I will pick them up. And I usually end up making a pretty decent profit on them. They just take a little while to sell. So I paid $12 for these and usually um, that's what my Goodwill prices Nike's at either $12.99 or $14.99. I had a 10% off coupon when I bought these. That's another reason that sometimes I will pick them up is if there's a lot of stuff and I'm gonna use my coupon, then I'll want to get more bang for my buck with the coupon, if that makes any sense. But like I said, they almost always end up selling and these sold for 50. So that's a pretty great uh, price. I do like to look up the uh, style name and make sure, you know, that they don't go for more. I can't remember what I listed these at. I think 69. And they did take a little while to sell, probably four or five months. Um, but I am happy to you know get 50 bucks for them and after posh fees and my cost of goods that made my profit $25.98. So that's pretty good. I think I think that must have been an offer to liker so it must have been 50 with discounted shipping. The next item that sold is this Brahmin handbag. Isn't that pretty? Uh, I love picking up Brahmin mainly because most of my thrift stores here don't know about this brand and so they don't mark it up. And this brand has a very high, t high retail. Uh, it is spelled B-R-A-H-M-I-N. This probably retailed between two and $300. It ended up selling for 65, which is a little bit less than what I normally get for them but I don't know if you can see it, but it had this kind of cut slit on the handle. It didn't go all the way through, but it was there. And then it also had these dirty marks. You see that around the edge of the interior. So uh, when I got this offer for 65, I went ahead and accepted it just because of those flaws. Typically I sell Brahmin. I guess 65 is not completely out of the range but usually in the 60 to $150 range, depending on the style and color. Some styles are more popular than others, and some colors are more popular, popular than others. I had only paid uh, $6 for this because like I said, some of my thrift stores here don't recognize this brand, and so they just price it like you know, a regular fashion brand. So a lot of times I can find them for pretty affordable prices. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $46. That's a really great profit on a $6 investment. So I will almost always pick up ramen when I find it uh, because it's a pretty reliable uh, seller for me doesn't usually sell uh, super fast for higher prices, uh, but inevitably it always sell, sells in, you know, two to four months. Okay, the next item that sold is this semi-vintage Samsonite briefcase. Uh, it also has this spot to put it over your luggage, so it could be used for travel, and it comes with a long shoulder strap. I already tucked that inside. For those of you who have watched my videos before, you've seen that I do pretty well with briefcases. This sold for $50. And this was on offer, I think I had it listed for 69. 
And a lot of times, again, I can find briefcases for reasonable prices at my thrift stores. They also don't usually sell super quickly, but they do inevitably sell for decent prices, usually in the 40 to over $100 range, depending on the brand and the leather. I like to pick, um, you know, pick them up when they have really nice quality leather. That seems to uh, keep the, or help me get good prices for them. So I had only paid $3 for this. This one I actually got at the bins and they, um, I took it up there and because it was a little heavier, they didn't charge me by the pound. They just charged me the flat $3, which I was really surprised about, but also very thankful. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $37. Another great profit. I did have to make a Franken box for this because it wouldn't bend in the middle. So what I mean by that is I take two uh, priority boxes and nestle them together and make a larger box. And that doesn't affect the cost or anything for your shipping as long as it is not over five pounds. Uh, this is another uh, shirt that I picked up while thrifting. It's by J. Crew. It's kind of a longer tunic length. I thought it was pretty cute. I got it for three bucks at a thrift store. Uh, it seems like you guys are liking hearing about some of my outfits here and there, so I'm happy to continue to share. So it is Memorial Day weekend coming up this weekend, and we are going on our first camping trip of the season. I'm very excited. We're also taking our puppy on uh, her first camping trip and her first time in the boat. So <laughs> fingers crossed she does well. She's only five months old, so it could be a little interesting. Uh, hopefully I will get a video uh, with some thrift shopping, thrift haul, and, uh, you know, little snippets from our camp trip uh, because those seem to do okay when I have a thrift haul. So I'd love it if you check out my other videos uh, besides my ship with me videos. If you haven't already, that really helps me out uh, when you view all of my videos. So we're, tomorrow's Friday and we are leaving, but hopefully I will have some more sales to share with you because this week has not been good at all and I could really use the sales. So I will hope to see you uh, tomorrow. Hey there, it's the next day and thankfully I have uh, five sales to ship out, which is a relief because this week has been very slow. I'm pretty short on time right now, so I'm gonna try to keep the chit chat to a minimum, which is proving to be more and more difficult for me. Uh, but let's get started. So the first thing that sold is another pair of these Cicadia Bug Beetle earrings. These are about three inches long. I'm not gonna take them out of the package because they are brand new. They are by Larissa Loden. And the little card was marked on these. I picked them up at a fundraiser sale, um, and I think that someone had don't had had like a boutique that was going out of business, and they do donated some of these new earrings because I got like six or eight pairs. I only ended up paying about a dollar fifty uh, per pair for these, and at first I was worried that um, it wasn't a very good buy because they are such statement pieces, but I think this is the fourth pair that I've sold, and they've all sold in the $20 to $30 range per pair. It looks like this designer, Larissa Loden, had a um, not super high, but higher retail price. These ended up selling for $20. I had sent out 30% off offers with discounted shipping on everything in my closet again because sales have still been slow. So this buyer purchased them for 20 with discounted shipping. Like I said, I had paid a $1.50 for them. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $12.48.
Not a huge profit, but for a $1.50 investment, I think that that is just fine. The next item that sold is this vintage scroll statement necklace. Now, I'm not sure if this is something that I would normally purchase outright, but it was given to me in a large lot of jewelry. Someone wanted, at first they wanted to sell me the jewelry, but when I looked at it, it wasn't, um, there weren't really any substantial pieces in there. So I just told her that I wasn't interested and she was like, honestly, I just don't want it so you can have it. So she gave me this um, big jewelry box full of jewelry, but it was all kind of um, lower end costume jewelry from like the 90s, which you can sell, uh, but it just, you just don't get very good prices for it and it takes a while to sell. So this I had had listed for, I'm not sure how long, maybe a year or two, and it ended up selling for $19 with discounted shipping. So for something that's free, I made a profit of $13.18. I am not gonna complain about that one bit, uh, but don't be afraid to you know say no when people offer you large lots of things that you are not interested in because you know just just trust your gut because like this you know had I paid for it and it took two years to sell and it took my time to list it and photograph it and all the things it's not really worth it but for free it's definitely worth it okay you guys another throw pillow sold this sold for $129 plus a $5 packaging fee, so $134 total. This is a pretty cool one. It's triangle shaped, it's velvet. It's probably from the 60s. I use the title Mid-Century Modern 1960s Orange Velvet Triangle Throw Pillow. This did not take very long to sell either. Uh, maybe about two weeks. So now I have sold three throw pillows, two for $129 and one for $89. <laughs> They're vintage throw pillows, but uh, can you guys believe that? At first I thought maybe I just got lucky with that first um, silk pillow that I sold but now I'm thinking it's not just luck. I'm thinking that I, we can definitely sell these pillows for higher dollar amounts. So keep your eyes out for them when you're out at, I usually find these more often at estate sales. Um, so keep your eyes out and pick them up because they are definitely a good seller. So it sold on Cherish.com for $134. I paid $3 at an estate sale. Cherish charges a 22% seller's fee. So after their fee and my cost of goods, my profit was $102.62. Yes, awesome. That's probably my best profit of the week. It hasn't been a very good week, so that makes me really happy uh, to have that sale. Oh, a couple of you have asked for the link to my Cherish shop, and I apologize, but at this time, I'm not going to share that link, and it is just for privacy and security reasons. Um, there's some information on there that I can't change to make it private, and um, that makes me uncomfortable with being on YouTube and sharing all this stuff. So right now, I'm just not going to share that link. I'm really sorry about that, uh, but it just makes you feel a little bit uncomfortable to share that. Uh, if you do see something in one of my like thrift haul videos or something and you're interesting, interested in purchasing it, let me know and I can create a listing on Poshmark or um, we can try and figure something out. But at this time, I'm not going to share uh, my Cherish link. Okay, the next item sold on Poshmark, and it is a pair of these Bionic sandals. Now, I don't know if I would have picked these up 
unless they were in practically brand new condition. And there was two pairs in the same size and they were only priced at $6. And with summer coming, I thought that uh, they were, it was a timely purchase and the price was right and they were in great condition. So these only took a couple of weeks to sell which I think is great. They ended up selling for $44 with discounted shipping. I'm not sure if these sold for, I think they sold for 10% off uh, because I'm pretty sure I only listed them for $49. But I had sent out 30% off offers, like I said, and someone didn't accept, someone else didn't accept that. So I'm glad they didn't so that I could get this higher price. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $27.18. I think that's a, a great profit, especially for a quick flip. And I have talked about Vionic before, how it doesn't always do well for me. Um, but I will pick it up only if it is a lower price. Okay, the next item is this vintage embroidered kind of Hawaiian shirt. I just thought this was really beautiful. It's either linen or cotton. I had had it listed for in the realm of a year and I think the reason it didn't sell was because I didn't have measurements in there and I don't know how I missed that. But yesterday somebody asked me to provide the measurements. I provided the measurements and then they sent me kind of a lowball offer, uh, but I hadn't had any sales at that point. So I just decided to go ahead and accept the $15 offer. Um, because I had had it a year and I wanted to keep that momentum going for my sell sales. I had only paid a dollar for it. It also had, it, you probably can't see it on camera, but it also had some fading and kind of discoloration from hanging in the closet. Do you know what I mean? When like kind of dust collects at the top. So I just decided I would go ahead and take that $15 and move it out. I had only paid a dollar for it. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $11. Not that great, but for a dollar investment, not that bad either. So that is it for this week. Um, it's only Friday, so normally I would have almost all day today and tomorrow to add in, but um, we, like I said, we're going camping. So a pretty dismal week, but it is what it is. My total sales were $510. My total cost of goods was $42.50. That's another really great ratio for my return on investment. And my total profit after posh fees and my cost of goods was $353.82, which is way off from my goal. But like I said, there's pretty much two days missing and um, not every week can be a great week and you just have to stay positive and keep listing. Okay, so if I haven't mentioned it in this video, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to my channel. It's totally free and it really helps me out. If you could give this video a thumbs up and comment down below, those things also really help me out. And I will be back next week with another Ship With Me video. I really hope to see you then. Thank you so much for watching. Stefan?